Hey everybody, welcome back. We're doing a look forward what's to come in 2021 with McMull. Uh, so get ready for some excitement, hopefully some maybe positive outlooks on what we got coming. Been a tough year on a lot of different dynamics of life in general. And we're gonna look at what the year's been like in 2020 on McMull's channel. We'll talk about that a little bit. You can obviously find that channel, uh, his channel and the link to that video in the description below. And we're just gonna kind of see what we think, right? So let's look at, uh, in this video, let's look ahead, see what we got to come, what we're expecting, what we're hoping for, all kinds of different things, right? So let's get into it. Bring me Wolverthor. All right, McMull is here for it. So anybody who's not familiar with McMull, why don't you share where you're at, what you're doing, kind of life, just share your story a little bit wherever the where the folks can find you. My whole life story? Whole life story. We've got, you know, like, I don't know, however long you take. Well, my name is McMull too, but uh, I've got a channel that does Marvel Strike Force content and it's, all, it's just called MM2. Uh, I like long walks on the beach. <laughs> uh, I do a lot of Marvel Strike Force content over there. And uh, yeah, I reached out to you and like, you know, let's do let's do a year in review of 2020. And then let's also talk about what we want to look forward to in the future for 2020 as well, or 2021. And what we kind of want to see from the game here in the future. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I think it's a good idea. It's always nice to kind of reminisce a little bit and then also look to what might be coming ahead. So uh, we, we talked a little bit um, offline, you know, just to kind of see mm -hmm. how we we're going to approach it. But first, you know, what what is there any overarching things that you're looking for maybe with either content or game modes uh, coming up in 2021? Yeah, so uh, if anybody knows me from my Galaxy Heroes days, I did a lot of raid coverage over there in Galaxy Heroes, and those raids are quite a bit different from what we see here in Marvel Strike Force. But one of the things I always kind of think about is, man, I'd kind of like to see one of those raids over here, where you just have like one boss but spread out over like multiple phases and each different phase the battles change and you have characters you have you have villains like that in this game that would work like for instance galactus like can you imagine like your whole alliance teaming up together to fight galactus and it spreads out through all these different phases and trials and different stuff like every time i think about that i'm like man i would love to see something like that yeah that's awesome i love that concept and what what were yeah. what was it what was it called in galaxy of heroes i've heard different it's not the tower oh. thing but it's like a world boss that lasts like a week long no, so we had two different raids for that. We have the Rancor, and then we have the AAT, or as we call it, the Tank Raid. Mm -hmm. And both of those, basically, the first, the Rancor Raid, you fight, like, some Gaborian guards, and then you defeat them, and then the Rancor comes out behind his gate, roars, and then you start beating up on him. You can drop the gate on him. He'll eat your characters. It's it's a fun it's a fun little raid, and then in the, in the Tank Raid, you fight General Grievous. You go back and forth. You fight the Tank. You fight some droids as well. It's they're both really really fun. I mean, eventually they kind of got old because you had teams that would solo it, oh. but now they're kind of rolling out like new difficulties and up in the challenge. So I, it's it's just one where like you know kind of having like this whole challenge to your alliance to chip into, which I mean we already have that with these raids we have right now, but this is one that. Uh, I don't know. It's just something I like to see, like a little more like a cinematic kind of raid to it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I like it. Honestly, I think that's a great idea, and I, I like, like you said, there are some like uber villain, uber characters in the Marvel universe, and to have yeah. something that was, you know, whether it's lo longer drawn out throughout the week or longer throughout drawn out through the day, where it's these different phases, and your whole alliance has to talk that attack that specific person. I really like that, yeah. spe especially if they can add the dynamic to it where it's a. Uh, you know what you just you just go in when you go in right and you bring the yeah. team in so it's just like look you've got five hits a day or whatever the currency is to mm -hmm. hit it and you hit those five hits when you can um if, if i'd love that idea so we we definitely uh we as envoys maybe we can see if we can poke some buttons <laughs> not that they necessarily gonna listen but you know maybe we could feel them out a little bit and say hey look you know yeah. uh we can say the people want it too i don't know I think yeah, and I mean, one of the one of the big drawing points of those raids too was that that was how you got certain characters. Like the Rancor raid would give you Han Solo, and you got General Kenobi through the tank raid. I mean, can you so you can you imagine like that? Some like highly desirable character there in the raid, and you kind of like 
push it along and yeah you'll get you'll get people to get really invested in that raid for sure yeah and i mean those were the good old days of marvel strike force when we had the thanos raid the deadpool raid oh and... man i remember those days yeah i mean you know and even when <laughs> early on some of the greek raids you'd get at least charged for characters you wanted you know mm -hmm. where i think it start. i remember i was just looking at something the other day where beta gave you miles and at the time you kind of wanted some miles shards and then eventually that just completely went away so it really would be nice to feel that raids weren't just for some daily orb uh fragments and a season standing that really only kind of differentiates probably 20 t4s for you over the course of two weeks so yeah i love that idea i think it's good any other game mode you know in general that you think you'd love to see added to this game uh i mean probably something that gives us red stars on ultron he's starting to get pushed back on power <laughs> yeah and my fear is that they're going to do like uh, dark dimension 5 being with red stars for ultron but i don't know i mean something something gives me red stars for him because man i could really use some more power on it i feel like next year would be the time to do that it's just like yeah. all right at that point he's probably going to be pretty irrelevant uh without any red stars where it just you know you're gonna have ravager stitcher beating them at that point it's like all right guys i think it's time ultron becomes relevant again maybe he gets a new you know update or patch or something that allows him to get the red stars let's 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 see that so uh you know we talked about new game modes what about some existing game modes i know your favorite one that we always like to discuss is rta so um are you throwing this away or are you trying to just see if they can fix it a little bit is there anything that they can do to fix it uh, I think, I mean, we, we've both spoken to length to our, to length's end about what we want to see changed yeah. in RTA. And I mean, they are listening to that feedback. They're moving out the new, uh, the new feedback changes, like the, uh, the timing or the quitting. Quitters. Just fight against, uh, Get the against quitters the out of Oh my gosh. I, I sent an envoy chat the other night. I'm ready for punishment for people <laughs> who just rage quit because I'm just tired of it. <laughs> I'm with you a hundred percent. Like let's. Let's, let's just get some people who just straight up like, come on guys, you are gonna yeah. take, yeah, I'm with you there. Yeah, but um, yeah, so they are they are working on changes, so I don't really have much to say on that right now because I wanna see what they're gonna implement before I do another video or talk about more with real time. That's fair. Now. What about uh, a game mode like War? Is there anything that you could see that could be evolved in War for 2021? Yes. Yeah, uh, for War, I think if they started to do an efficiency kind of factor into it so that they take away the the uh, like certain number of energy attacks that you have and instead make it so that it's based on efficiency so that you earn a certain number of points based on if it's your first time attempt and you actually defeat the enemy you get more points mm -hmm. and if you have to do like multiple like 10 5 or 10 attempts against an enemy you'll get you'll get a severe penalty and points awarded to you and this kind of takes it, and this will kind of change the dynamics of war away from racing to see who can clear first to seeing who could be more efficient in their attacks. And that kind of starts to put a little more emphasis on defense as well. Because yeah. I see a lot of people just like taking these teams in and just one-shotting things. And people don't really spend much on defense. They just want to go for offense because it's, yep. it's, more, it's more tilted toward being as fast as you possibly can on offense. I'd kind of like to see them do this efficiency factor. And this is something where I've seen from Galaxy of Heroes as well, I'm borrowing some stuff from that, where the points are determined based on your efficiency. And I don't know how you feel about that, if that's something you're really I, looking forward I, to. I, pers war. Personally, I would welcome anything that made war feel like less of a race. I know, yeah. so I'm a leader in my group, and I will say that, you know, and we're in a time zone where it, it begins at 11 a.m. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, but mm -hmm. it also, you know, gets to the point where, you know, like right now we just started, but depending when, how we do, how efficient we are and all that, it's going to end, uh, tonight around midnight. So, you know, as a working adult, that becomes very difficult for me to sit here and come in and try to like coordinate that and be like, okay, I've got to set an alarm. We've got people on the East coast. We've got people in Asia. We've got people in UK and I'm just like, this sucks. So I really <laughs> like that idea about you know being able to like you know and i'm sure you've heard the the terminology toes two on each side yep. yeah yeah so you know uh, we do that in my alliance right now we're we're working our way towards toes right toes right now in our alliance war yeah so you you really you set it up for that and then you hope that you know if, if it comes down to each side is with their toes that everybody shows up at that particular energy drop around you know 12 13 hours into the uh war 
-hmm. And it's like, okay, well, whoever's here shows up and they win. And yeah, so anyway, long story there, but I welcome some sort of efficiency factor in this where it's like, look, it's not about when you finish, it's about how efficient you are when you finish. Now, yeah. if if they need to reward uh, some additional points, be, if both teams are equally efficient and then it comes to the person who finishes first, okay, maybe there could be some sort of point bonus there. Um, mm -hmm. But I wouldn't want it to be like a guaranteed 500 points. This team is obviously the one who won because then you're still gonna be racing. But yeah. um, I, lo I love it in concept and I would welcome it, especially if it allows it so that uh, players and captains don't have to stay up and set alarms. It's like, look, I'll wake up and hit because it really doesn't matter. You know, Now there'll be the race at the front end with the getting to the armories, which I'm fine with that. Let's race the armories, but at least the race on the back end isn't there where people have to set alarms. So yes, uh, yeah. take McMull's suggestion to heart, Scopely, <laughs> let's get it done. <laughs> Uh, all right, so what about uh, anything in raids? You know, I know we talked a little bit about, you know, the, the new raids, but what about the existing raids that are in game? You know, obviously there's a lot of talk about the Greek raids and the Greek sliders. We don't necessarily have to go into that in, in detail, but is there anything in the, ra the current raid system that you'd want to be adjusted uh, for the new year? Uh, right now, no. Um, I mean, we just got level 80 in the year 15 increase. So I'm expecting to see a new level of difficulty add on to Ultima 7 at some point. Because, I mean, 7.5 is more tuned for Tier 14. So once you go up to Tier 15, you're probably going to be able to go through Ultima 7.5 pretty easily. So I'm expecting to add a new level of difficulty to that at some point. I've already talked about like the new raids I would like to see. And it seems that the high difficulty for Greek raids is now tuned for Tier 15 as well. So I think they're kind of set to a good spot. I will say though, they need to remove the uh, the blocking of heals and revives outside of matches inside the Greek raids. I absolutely hate that, I can't stand <laughs> it. And if you're not paying attention and you have a brain fart like I did in my Alliance raid earlier and you forget about that and you lose Minerva, you're toast. I mean, yeah, you're screwed. Yeah, you're toast, you're toast. <laughs> The, no, that's 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 very true. Now, one of the things you mentioned an Ultimus maybe eight. What if I challenge you to say I think the Ultimus raid should end because Ooh. he's no longer a villain, and a new raid should come in, and whether maybe they call it Doom, I don't know, but like a Doom oh. raid or some, you know what I mean? I know it's not new content, but to me, I think Ultimus. I mean, he's gone unless he makes a comeback. I don't want to see an Ultimus raid. How do you, how would you feel about that concept? Uh, yeah, no, I could totally see that. I mean, yeah, you definitely have Ultimus once you're up to Ultimus 7.5, you're clearing DD3, you're getting red stars on him. So yeah, they have to bring a new villain in. I haven't really thought about who that new villain would be. So yeah, I could definitely see them doing that. Okay, all right. Well, we'll have to see. We'll see how that goes uh, for it. Now, one of the things that we'll probably cover a little bit in your video is probably bug things. Is there anything that you know specific bugs that you want them to fix for 2021 maybe like a top two or top three that you're like get this thing fixed right now oh man um ooh. see now that you've asked that like all the bugs that i constantly <laughs> think about have just like left my mind yeah well I'll so put, i can't think about any of them <laughs> i'll say one for me specifically is i feel like shield and war they've had this visual bugs and I swear there's some sort of resistance bug for shield and war that they just resist everything. Um, See, I've never had that problem. Really? You're just, maybe. Yeah, I maybe, don't have that visual glitch, which is weird. Everybody talks about, I'm like, I, like everything dispels properly. Okay. I'm definitely applying the blinds and everything where I'm fine with like Brotherhood and stuff. So I don't have that issue, but I've seen people show it. It's like, I got nothing. <laughs> I gotcha. All right. Well, for me, that's if, if, if that still exists, that's definitely one that comes that comes to mind. And, you know, it's not necessarily and I'm transitioning a little bit from bugs to, you know, what I'll call potentially manipulations. And mm -hmm. one of the ones that I definitely wanted to mention, and you might feel the same way about this, and we're not going to mention how to do this. We're just going to mention that yeah. we know it's out there. But there's a, an arena manipulation that people use that I'd love. I'd if, if, if Scopely can find a way to get that out of the game, I'd be very big. Is there any other, you know, bugs or manipulations or that specific one that you want to chime in on? No, uh, I mean, I'm, we're pretty sure Scopely's aware of that bug and that they are working on figuring out how to get it nixed. Um, don't really have much else to say about that beyond don't be a scumbag and use it. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, it, yeah, it's just compete, compete with your... No. Yeah. fellow uh shard yeah just like 
best man or woman wins through playing the game properly and just deal with the results. Yeah, I will say in terms of bugs, one thing that, I mean, we've stressed this endlessly, more testing and more QA. Oh, yes, Please. yes. I because was... it, it just gets, it got really bad over the last like six months, six, seven months. It just felt like everything was coming out bugged. Yeah, no, I agree. And, you know, there was this uh, conversation that's kind of happened last night, this morning a little bit about our friend Longshot and his his passive and i i have to admit yeah. I, I it was it was like three in the morning when i found out and i woke up i was moving from one couch to the bed and i was getting a little ragey you know <laughs> i was kind of like wait a minute i you know there's i just spent money on these guys but now it ended up the bug was a, it was less impactful than i thought it was if it ends up being the assist bug versus the everything yeah. else um and i agree i think i want to just yeah ultimately you know support the statement you just said it's like you know, even if they ask like a couple content creators, you know, hey, look, can you can you do some specific testing for us on these test servers? We don't have the people, whatever. And and even you know, they could, God forbid, find a way to compensate those content content creators for their time. I'm sure there are plenty of people who, not even content creators, but other people would be willing to do it. So yeah, and um, I mean, like uh, the one that really set me off was Doc Ock and his uh, his offense down bug. Yeah. That one, I remember I was on Twitch when I found out about that one. I just, like, went off for, like, 10 minutes. Because that's one, like, you you obviously have any sort of testing would figure out that one's wrong. That, that's, yeah. It's the, like, uh, the offense down resistance was being applied to both teams. Yeah. I mean, it's like, why is this not working? <laughs> you know, one of the main characters you'd probably bring with this team's first move puts this yeah. on the other team. You know, and it's like, why is everybody <laughs> resisting that? That would seem weird. You know, I, that, at yeah. some point you would think that would have got brought up. No, and I agree with you. And I, I've got a question for you. You know, in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, did did they have as many bugs over there? I know that game had its challenges. And, I, you know, from all in all, it seems like Scopely has handled the community a little bit better than those guys. But what about the bug and QC in that game? Did they did they have that pretty well under control? Oh, yeah. There was, there was plenty of bugs over in that game. But, uh... You know, there was a lot of testing and stuff too, so it wasn't as bad. But yeah, man, there was there was times where you run into some serious bugs over there. You'd be like, "Oh wow, that's pretty bad." But they were they were pretty speedy and quick on getting things fixed. Okay, so that was nice at least. That's good. That's good. So, any other overarching things that you're looking forward to outside? We're getting ready to look into characters, which is the obvious thing. But before we get into that, we're gonna finish with those. Anything else in the game that you want to see? Uh, no. No, I think that about covers everything. Okay. So, obvious, we know characters are going to come next year. That's the one thing in the game that we can say without a doubt. What is, like, just give me your top, if you got them off the top of your head. It could be top one, but whatever top number of characters you're like, I want to see these people in the game. Uh, number one is definitely going to be Professor Xavier. Uh, I definitely want him in the game. I know a lot of people say, mention that one, but man, I could really use some Professor X. Uh, that was, um, that's actually been the big controversy with Jubilee, because people look at parts for kit, and they're like, hey, that looks like something you'd see in Xavier's kit, <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's, he's definitely a character I really want to see. I don't know, uh, I just don't really quite know who else. Uh, I am curious to see who they're going to bring in with X-Factor. That's going to be fun to see who we get with that. And then, um... Yeah, I don't really have anybody else off the top of my mind right now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I definitely uh, support you in the uh, Professor X one. I like him as a character <laughs> a lot. You know, I think a lot of people really do like the X-Men. And obviously, we have a big mutant gear grind right now. I'm going to yeah. throw in Nightcrawler in that same group. You know, yeah. um, I, anybody who is pretty much on that 90s animated series, you know, Rogue and Gambit were there as well. I'm not, you know, Tana loves those guys. He... I don't care as much as he does. Nightcrawler is the one I want to see the most from the X-Men probably at this point. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as a Wolverine fan, I'd love to see Omega Red kind of enter the fray. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, Galactus, how they bring him into the game. I'd love to see him or somebody like him at some point. Yeah. Thor 4 is coming. You know, I'd like to see some new Asgardians. It could be, uh, you know, Jane Foster, Odin. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Gore the God Butcher. You know, I'd love to. It's whenever that movie's coming out. Blade. You know, we, we some of these we know are probably coming through some things that we've uh, kind of heard. You know, again through yeah. the rumor mill. So yeah, those are some of the ones that I'm kind of 
you know, looking in at. Uh, you know, I'd love to see something happen with Quicksilver. You know, the WandaVision TV show is going to do be doing something. Maybe Vision and Wanda get a rework and they bring in, you know, I think that whole series and uh, Wanda is going to go to a House of N type situation. So I'd love yeah. to see her powers just really be what they should be and just be dominant. Um, but yeah, that's 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 kind of where I'm at with the characters. Anything else pop in your mind as I was kind of rambling there with some of the characters that you definitely want to see? No, yeah, I mean, uh, one video I want to do is like talking about like all like the new uh, new announced like Marvel stuff that's coming out here in the future with that investors call from like a week or two ago, and just kind of talk about like what we'd like to see from that. But um, yeah, no, I I fully expect something with Wanda and Vision. I mean, they already have some synergy a little bit, but not a lot. So I'm kind of expecting them to get a little bit more love with that. There's a rumor about Blade coming and he's gonna be part of a supernatural team. So then I ask questions of Scarlet Witch is getting moved out and what happens with her. So yeah, it's gonna be fun to see what they do with that. And yeah, it's gonna be fun to see if some of these other legendaries we have here. And if this Blade legendary rumor holds up, I'm very, very excited for that one. Yeah, no, for sure. I think that'll be definitely cool. Well, yeah. a lot of stuff coming up in the MCU that's pretty exciting. So we'll hope, We'll look forward to that. that's one thing in 2021 i know i'm looking forward to is some new mcu movies so i feel like it's been too long i'm going through withdrawals at this point you know and yeah i mean i'm gonna i'm just happy i have hbo max to watch wonder woman that's that's how desperate i've gotten at this point so uh so anyway uh appreciate uh everybody stopping by mcmull you want to share anything else with the folks watching nope just uh, appreciate you guys watching the video and checking things out. Yeah, so make sure to go over to Mick Bull's channel. Uh, we're going to have another video over there looking back on 2020. Uh, like I mentioned in uh, the other collabs with Mullet, does some good, good theory crafting. Good, uh, He's got a good brain on him. He thinks things through, so definitely follow him. If you like my stuff, you're probably going to like his stuff too. So appreciate you guys stopping by. Hammer down that like button, notification bell, subscription button. You guys know the drill there. Mick Bull, you want to send him off with a wonderful day? Hey, everybody out there watching, you guys have a wonderful day. See you guys next time. Bye.